I'm Ansgar Friedrich. I'm the producer and also responsible for the re-recording of the film um, Wains of the World. Um, most of all, I'm, I'm a friend, close friend of Biamba since uh, almost 20 years now. So we done almost all her films together. And first as a, in the position as a sound mixer and a sound designer, um, we learned uh, or we 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 uh, met first each other uh, not through the film world but uh, through our um, uh, our passion for Mongolia. So um, until now, I was there, I think six times in more than a year, and we share a lot of friends there. And yeah, um, throughout my career I started as a sound designer and then more and more also uh, went to production and about four or five years ago uh, Biamba told me about her idea and if we sh could develop the film together and then together with uh, Jeska Rickels the um, co-director and uh, co-author of the film um, we developed the script um, which was based on on the experiences that we got through the years. Um, the first time I was there in 2000, and uh, you can imagine when you, you were hungry on the countryside, you just uh, stepped into a river hold, holding your hands like that, and the um, fish will pass in the, uh, in the next minute, and you just could throw it to the land uh, and you had something to eat. Uh, in 2014, when I was there the last time before we shooted this uh, film, uh, in the region where we were, um, nearly half of all rivers and seas were dead because they washed out um, the gold with chemicals uh, and just let them into the rivers and they poisoned uh, all the water. And besides that, um, for getting the resources out of the earth, they lowered um, the groundwater level um, so that um, the nomads could hardly find any water for their animals to feed. And um, the climate change, in addition to that, uh, brought a lot of hard winters. So the the whole like living that that for me was a kind of role model or should be a role model for us because nomads they move four, four times a year, uh, always to the same places, uh, season by season. Um, so we are actually the nomads traveling all the land, uh, all the world, and they're just traveling their four spots. But when they left the spot, like two weeks later, you don't find anything that reminds you of that there was a human being there. And... Um, so their carbon footprint, in a way, is is the the aim that we always have. Uh, so yeah, so we could have learned from them, but uh, uh, we did the opposite. We destroyed their way of living. Um, that was um, the basic idea um, to to make a film on the background um, of this, um, especially the gold mining, which is um, a very specific example of the insanity of, of human mankind and capitalism because just like three to five percent of gold that is uh, taken from the earth is really needed for medical, for, for platines or something like that. The rest uh, is used for jewelry, or just put into like um, uh, gold bars and uh, put it, uh, they put it into uh, some banks. So there would be no difference if they just, because they know how much gold is worth, they just could trade with their licenses and leave the gold down in the, in the, in the ground. Um, but instead, uh, they, they really um, destroy all the nature there. Yeah, and that that was the um, the starting point, and we wanted to create a 
family story um, around that, which also um, is an example or stands for this heritage from generation to generation, uh, which in this case, by the death of the father, um, is interrupted and the, the son needs to be uh, or wants to, to get into the footprints of, of the father um, way before the normal uh, coming of age period where you you go out on the street to to uh, fight for Fridays for Future or things like that. And um, yeah, that was the the basic approach on the story. And when we went there, uh, we had a wonderful main location found close to a mine. And um, we were ready to shoot three days before shooting. And then we um, witnessed the strength of this industry because three days before the start of the shoot, um, a, a New Zealand mine, mining corporation that was next to, to the shooting location bought all the land and for, um, didn't allow us to, to shoot there. So right. three yeah. days before shooting, we, we didn't have a main location. Um, we then, um, yeah, had to, to scout again and we found this land owned by a nomad, um, which at the end of the day was even more perfect than, than the original location. And we asked the nomad if he would give us his land to shoot on that. And in Mongolia, it's always you you not just asking it, it's a procedure of three to four hours um getting to the yurt uh drinking some milk tea and telling stories and then he began to to tell his story and even though that our story was completely fictional um there were so many parallels and at the end of the the story he told us um, that he's very willing to give us the land because he don't have any chance to to fight against the miners. He just can stay there until he dies, but there will be no one coming after him. Uh, and it's a need for him that the world needs to to know about it. And that was something that was so encouraging for the whole shoot and for the whole creation of the film and that that guided us through the also hard times of shooting there um, because we were close to the mines and we also always also have to deal with them or fear like have to hide our our shooting uh, but all went well and now we are very very happy with the result that you just saw in the in the stream cinema I want to say but now in the stream <laughs> yeah and, and rightly so to be so proud and especially overcoming such adversity and even with I was chatting to you earlier about you know talking about possible questions about what challenges you had and mm. how more challenging than not having a location <laughs> three days yeah. before the shoot so um i'm sure then you know in the end with everything culminating in such a good result to tell the story and get that message across that was a great feeling to have especially working collaboratively with so many people and the people that are and were the most important to the story. Yeah. Yeah, like working in Mongolia is very special because um, I think you really have to merge with the, with the culture there and with the, with the people, like two thirds of our team were Mongolians, rest were uh, international from Lebanon, from uh, from France, from from everywhere. Of course, mainly from from Germany as well, but also Netherlands. And uh, we we lived together in yurts, uh, so we had an editing yurt uh, to to editing while shooting, and yeah, and you also have to to 
slow down or focus in another way than you would normally do in a, on a shoot. Um, so this, this is something that, that also um, brings something into to the film that you can't, um, that you can't uh, design on a, on, a, on a script or something like that. Uh, this is some, a process that that all the team needs to go to uh, go through and and be part of it and yeah so also the the experiences that the team told us afterwards until now that this was really a life-changing project for them um, there are a lot of small funny stories for example we we didn't have the possibility uh, to to get a caterpillar first, and um, normally you say, okay, here two thousand uh, dollars. We need it tomorrow, but that's not the way how it works in Mongolia. We yeah. went to um, to the guy who owned it, and then in uh, another three hours of of storytelling, we found out that. Um, his his father um, had uh, throat pain, and in Mongolia, the best thing against throat pain uh, pain is a wolf's tongue. And by accident, our local producer still had a wolf's tongue in his refrigerator. <laughs> so we had to pay nothing for the caterpillar, but just to bring the the wolf's tongue there. So. This is, and you wouldn't have, have uh, get any caterpillar uh, just by by money. Um, they they don't need it. They don't want want it. They want to have the exchange. And yeah. this is, uh, yeah, the special approach that you have to uh, uh, deal with, but that you have to enjoy actually uh, when when you shoot in a country like Mongolia. Yes, and that approach is probably something that's very different to uh, normal, in inverted commas, a normal production when it's all about shooting scenes quickly and being mindful of budgets and getting through a script, you know, within a certain time frame. But it sounds actually like a really positive and lovely experience that it wasn't just about getting the job done, that you really integrated into the, the local culture and it felt more, more meaningful I'm sure then it wasn't just like you were making a film that you were really learning and experiencing the local traditions and culture. Yeah yeah that's that's definitely it. It starts with the first evening where the team introduces themselves to each other which you uh, normally do with a small speech here or or you just introduce in mongolia you you have the the um, bowl of, of vodka in your hands and you sing a song and um, <laughs> the mongolians sing beautifully and long songs and they're your first time experience that you're uh, your uh, knowledge about all um, all all the text, all the lyrics of a German uh, old song uh, is not that good. <laughs> so <laughs> some of us started to uh, take out their their mobile phones to to um, to to get the texts from from the internet. But it all worked out, and this is yeah. These are the the specialties on on a gathering like that. Well, that's incredible. And it's so nice to get that insight to the, the filmmaking process and this particular story that you have told through film. And it's so nice to hear as well that um, overall, the whole message of the film was just so important to get across. And it is something now that audiences through Cinemagic will get to experience and you'll be able to share that story and reach new audiences as well. And we're really glad to have it at, at Cinemagic and hopefully you'll be able to make more films together with the same director and the same team because it sounds like you have a brilliant dynamic and a great relationship between the crew. Yeah, hopefully, hopefully. We're already working on a new one. <laughs> uh, 
And the topic is not just a Mongolian topic. Um, there's one story in, in Romania where one of the big corporations, um, uh, they uh, made a deal with a local city mayor and they bought um, land for, for getting resources out of it, um, uh, which is, was already uh, designated to be um, UNESCO World Heritage. And um, now it got uh, to that, that uh, heritage um, um, nomination or uh, how it's called. And um, because of that contract, now the, the company um, have, uh, started a lawsuit against Romania to get uh, 4 billion euros um for the for that that they can't uh get the resources from there so these structures are everywhere um and this is something that that is really insanely um uh yeah destroying earth or or uh taking the money from from people that don't have it mm -hmm. so um this is really something the world should also have have an eye on. And what better way than film to to communicate that and yeah. you know get that across to to the wider public. Um, well, we wish you all the best with the film yes. and all of your endeavors and keep telling those stories. It's so so important um, for the wider society and um, and world to know about. So. Thank you so much, and we will we will keep in touch, and we look forward to sharing the yeah. film with our audiences. Thanks a lot, and have a good good day. Thank you so much. Thanks for making bye. the time. Okay, bye, bye bye. Thanks a lot. In kid mini ko yun yamar to to digi jot chinda. Sa sa hindi hindi ba? Ito ni yamar. Ano burong mitig to wala ta? Alting sotolang da. Mini otro si kini ay chindit na hango si licen si Demurtlo ay siglas dos por dos tigit ka. Ino orhan otyo wala si kag. Zakzakrit. Ta hoyri hirut na tadi yamar amate. Alting na wala otro na dos si tich. Kamu tak tahu hati yang marah itu? Ia itu, oh ya, oh. Mini hujan. Video kita setuju. Jadi saya sangat, jam jam itu baru waktu. Indo yang tindak dosa. Indo bahagia tak tindak dosa. Indo kan dosa. Apa nak jadi dengan dosa seratus tak? Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe.